All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Today, we're going to be talking about becoming the CEO of your major pentatonic. What do I mean by that? Well, um, I'm going to use the analogy of, you know, when you graduate from college, you know, like I did, and you get out into the working world, you think you can, you know, climb to the top of the corporate ladder. But really, you know, it takes a lot of experience and know-how to get there. And a lot of us, you know, we learn the major pentatonic pattern and go, okay, we know it. But for some reason, when we play, it still doesn't have the authority that we hear a lot of our favorite guitar players have. And so we got to put the time in. You got to graduate from the Pentatonic College and then get working in an entry level kind of position here and really understanding how it works and why it makes a melody. And once you do that, then you can start really, you know, uh, climbing the corporate Pentatonic ladder terrible analogy, and really starting to make music based on your knowledge and feel of how this thing works. So with that being said, make sure you share and subscribe because this is going to be a great lesson, uh, I think, and let's get down to it. All right, so for some reason, I have this obsession with playing B major pentatonics. I just do. So I have a B major backing track, and uh, we're going to play a B major pentatonic in the uh, form one, also known as a G shape. And um, if you want to know about that, you can watch this video right here. But let me show it to you, okay? It's going to be four, seven, four, six, four, six, four, six, four, seven, four, seven. This is a B major pentatonic. Some people, if you're just getting into this, might be like, isn't that a G sharp minor pentatonic? Well, yes, but also the major root note is here, okay? So the, the Bs are seventh fret of the E string, fourth fret of the G string, and seventh fret of the high E. This is the major pentatonic, okay? You can look at these things two ways, major and minor. All right, so now, it's so important to see a couple of things here. Uh, number one, you want to know its intervals. You want to know what makes this thing tick. So we're going to start at the root note here. Major pentatonics, all major pentatonics consist of a one, sorry, a one, I should plug that a little bit louder, a two, a three, five, and a six. That's it. One, two, three, five, six, one, one, two, three, five, six, one. There's my girl, right? So there it is. You want to know it? One, two, three, five, six, and it repeats. One, two, three, five, six, back to one, and this guy here is a six. All right, so there should have been a graphic up on that screen. So what's important about that? Well, you really want to know the chord tones inside of this pentatonic. Why? I cannot stress this enough to you. Um, I really can't. The chord tones are the melody makers, or they are the moments that make your pentatonic you know, really bring it home to music. It's, it's, these, these are the notes that make the crowd like love your soloing. So you want to know where they are. There are several ways to know where they are. Number one is just know them, okay? And what are they? They are the ones, threes, and fives. I should have mentioned that. The ones, threes, and fives make up the major chord inside this pentatonic. They are located here. One, three, five, one, three, five, one. Now, some of you might know the relationship between the major pentatonic and a caged chord shape. You can see the G shape here and the thicker half here. And if you can see that chord shape inside of it, then you can see your chord tones as well. Or you can just know them as intervals. I see the chord in there. I also see the intervals. Why are these important? Well, these are your train stations. These are where people get on and, and the train stops and people get off and they and it, it you want to work your train tracks towards your stations. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is home. Remember, entry level job here, but the more you get into this and the more you study this, the better you're going to be guaranteed. So home. All right. Home is here. Here's a one. Here's a one. Here's a one. Very simple, all right? So I'm gonna take a little brief solo over this uh, nice, easy, breezy backing track, and all I'm gonna do right now is concentrate on pulling a Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, and you know, there's no place like home. All right, here we go. <laughs> Consciously, excuse me, I was just consciously kind of like moving around the pentatonic, bringing it home to the one. And if, if you think that sounded good and that's all you need, then go practice that. Take a B major backing track or a loop or come practice with me on Patreon where we can get all this stuff into your bones. Plenty of 
practice sessions and backing tracks there too, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's that's home, right? And so what's the next one you want to uh, look at? The next one, of course, in my humble opinion, is the major third. Uh, the major third or even minor third of a chord or arpeggio, the third is a very, very important note. It's what gives the pentatonic its flavor or the chord its flavor. And I'll show you where there's one here, one, three, right? Or one, three, okay? It's either here or here. And uh, now we're gonna concentrate on either starting or stopping on them. This is what we're talking about, the experience. Now you wanna hear, what does my major third have to offer? And so let me play, and then I'll start, I'll stop on them, and then we'll assess what it sounds like. Here we go, okay? pentatonic sounds freaking awesome all right that's what that's the uh that's what i think of it sounds right it sounds good it sounds so good and you want to remember you want to use whatever analogy uh you know whatever word comes to your mind for that major third you want to remember that flavor that adjective so that when you want it you can pull it out so right now i feel sorry i feel like i have like a rogue hair there uh, right now you could um just solo with ones and threes what do i mean by that okay well you know use the whole pentatonic but focus starting and stopping and starting and stopping on ones or threes and and you got to do this stuff you got to put your time in there is there are strong convincing melodies to be had the more you really start to shake hands with this pentatonic so here is another jam really quickly of me just playing and really concentrating on the ones and threes <laughs> Now, you probably saw me doing some other things there. We're going to discuss that really quickly, and actually right now. We're going to get to our next interval, okay? The next interval, man, this hair, is it's really there. I'm not freaking out. Uh, is the two. Let's go to the two now. I know that we have, a, we have a one, three, and five. We have a chord tone, but I want to get to the two first. Um, we have the root note, home. We have the major third, which just sounds freaking awesome, right? And so now we're going to look at that two. The two really is, there, there are two main jobs of the two. Number one, you can start off on a two and then get to a one. It's, it's not a chord tone, it wants to move. It, it, it sounds beautiful, don't get me wrong, it's just, it's not a chord tone. Chord tones are the pillars and they stay put in the ground and the, the non-chord tones are the bridges between them. And so when you're standing on them for, for too long, it's gonna start to get wobbly. And so even though the two is a part of, is, is a beautiful part of the major pentatonic, you wanna say to yourself, okay, when I'm on a two, it wants to move, okay? It either wants to go to a one or what is the most popular move in a major pentatonic is taking your two and bending it up. Here's your two, here's your one, sorry. Here's your two and bending it up to a three. This is the most popular thing that you see in major pentatonics. And so I have, a, I have a one here, I have a two here. I have a one here, I have a two here. This two, I can't really bend, I mean, you can. So you're gonna see it uh, either like hammer onto the three and then you know hammer onto the one, stuff like that. You're gonna use it as you know a central rivet to get to the three or get to the one or just generally move uh, in general. And so to recap before I do it, you can start on twos, you don't wanna end on twos. If you start on a two, it wants to move. Again, this is, you know, uh, you've now been promoted from your entry level job into the next level and a little bit of a pay raise and we're getting into the twos now. <laughs> and uh, remember, uh, non-chord tones, you can always start on, but they wanna move. So let's see what it sounds like when I throw a lot of twos in and I make them move to someplace. <laughs> All right, 
So it's like, whoa, the two can have some tension? Yeah, it has some really beautiful tension. It's in between the one and the three. It's a very nice note to shake hands with, all right? But you gotta make sure you don't wanna end on it. It doesn't, it, you know. It doesn't play well. It, it's not that it doesn't play well, it just wants to move. All right, so we talked about the one, we talked about the two, we talked about the three. All right, let's talk about my favorite note. You know it's coming, the five, all right? I have a video called The Power of the Five in case you know, you've never seen Stitch Method and have no idea what I'm talking about. Great video discussing how the five, it cuts the octave right in half. It has a tremendous amount of uh, potential energy, but it's also quite stable. It's, it's really a cool note. So where are the fives? Well, I have a one, three, I have a five here, and I have a one, three, five. So let's talk about the five. The five is a chord tone. You can totally start and stop on it. So let's just start right there. It's a pretty versatile note. And so again, I'm, you know, hope it's okay that I'm keeping the guitar tone clean. I figured I did enough distortion videos in the past. So here we go. All right, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna practice starting on the fives, one, three, five here, and stopping on the fives here. And when you listen, it, you should hear a, a kind of like, ooh, that sounds good, and maybe it wants to move. I don't know, it, it's just a great note. Here we go. quite well. There's this, it's like, it's like, I don't know. Um, it's like spy versus spy. It's like the white spy and black spy. Like you're like, which one are you right now? And, and it's really a cool note to, to listen to. Right. And that's an old comic, just in case you didn't get that reference. <laughs> and so, um, the idea is, uh, the five is really versatile. You can land on it. You can start on it. Now let's take a look at the other side of it. You can uh, sit and and bend it. You can kind of bend the five into the six and you can also create movement with it. So there's movement to be had. And so if I hit the five, you know, it's gonna want to go to a one. You can bend the five to the six. And then when you come back down, it's gonna want to go to the one. And, oh, sorry. There's the one there. So in terms of stability, which we already talked about starting and stopping, which is great, it also can be like a rubber band. You can play it just as it is and get to a one. You can bend or slide up to a six. That was right there. That was the flub. I was saying to myself, you know, hey, this might be the very first Stitch Method video where I don't screw up. And I screwed up. All right, so here we go. So the five can be played, then leads to a one. It can be bent to a six. It's gonna come back to a five and then down to a one. All right, here we go. stable and it also likes to move all right and so the last interval we're going to talk about is the six now i want to talk about this i saved it for last it's not because it's the last one in order the six the most deceiving note of a major pentatonic now it is not a chord tone well some people might be like well if you're playing a sixth chord it is all right, it's not a triad all right it's not a stable stable chord tone in terms of the most elemental chord tones and so the six doesn't like to be sat on in some instances. Um, it's rare, it is rare that we go home to a six. Now this is what you're gonna be challenged against or what you're up against. When you're looking at this pentatonic as a major, which we are, you know, the sixes are gonna be, let's see, one, two, three, five, six, right here, and one, two, three, five, six. We have a problem is because if you play a minor pentatonic, which is the same shape, okay, like this, what you think of the root note is, is here, and here, and here. These are the sixes in the major pentatonic, 
but they are the ones in a minor pentatonic. Now, I don't want to make it so hard where you don't understand this, but we are conditioned to come home to this note in a minor pentatonic setting. And that ruins the pentatonic, the major pentatonic for us a lot. There's a lot of times I'll play for you right now where you're playing a major pentatonic and uh, y your, your mind just wants to go home to this note, which is the minor root note. It's not the major root note. And it kind of spoils the mood. Right? So, you gotta understand, this is a major pentatonic. That's a sixth. Sixths like to move. Alright, and so an acceptable uh, six performance or use of the six is, of course, I, I talk about this on my Patreon channel. I don't know if I mentioned this on YouTube, but I treat the six as a turnbuckle, all right? I might have mentioned this before. I don't know. I've shot so many videos. But uh, if you're into wrestling, think about when one wrestler throws the other wrestler into the turnbuckle, boom, they hit it, they snap forward, and the guy just clotheslines them and knocks them out. This is kind of the same thing. Your, your root note here is home, and the sixth here is the turnbuckle that takes you back to the one. So let's just look at that turnbuckle move and you can watch it. Watch for when I go here, back to a one. And there it was three times. There it was down below. Boom, boom. It's a great turnbuckle note. It just is the end, all right? And so... So if you have a line that you're creating that goes like, use the turnbuckle. All right, it adds so much flavor. And so it also sounds quite acceptable when you go from a one to a six. All right. The idea is when you go from a one to a six, you're really creating this like conversation of tension release. You start with the release, really. You start with the release to the tension, and it knows it wants to go back to the release. And so the sixth is not a landing note. Now, I know I'm gonna get the comment, but this guitar player lands on the sixth here. Now, I have to say this. Yes, there are plenty of guitar players that will land on a six, but you also have to pay attention to the chord progression that's going on. This is just one chord vamp so that you, the entry level major pentatonic worker, can climb your way up to CEO. And when you climb your way up to CEO, you're gonna know so much about this pentatonic that when you play chords and different changing chords, you're gonna see those other chord tones in here. This is just a start. This is how you get your pentatonic to make music. So I'm gonna take one last solo here using all of these ideas. Ones are home. Twos like to go to ones or bent up to the major third. Uh, the major third is just a great note. Never underestimate the power of major third. The five, you can hold on to it or you can create movement. The six is not a root. Okay, and you don't want to end there. You can play it, just don't end there. So here we go. Let's just take a quick little solo. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, come practice this stuff with me in different pentatonic shapes. Get it underneath your fingertips so that you can at least jam with one chord right now, which is all you need. Remember, we just hired you, okay? And learn this, learn how it works. The more you learn how it works, the more you learn how to feel it, the more it becomes natural in your playing. I'll stop talking. Thank you for being here. And I'll talk very, very soon. Take care, bye-bye.